baseball. The Braves are streaking. Oh, yeah. 14 mm. wins in a row. Mm. One shy of the franchise record. Just four games behind the Mets. Oh, and Raffi, two scoops, cannot stop hitting bombs. That's now four straight games he sent presents to the people. And if you're keeping track, Ken Griffey Jr. holds the record with eight straight games with a moonshot. Mm. Speaking of taters... DraftKings contributor Steve Buchanan and Nick Fryer are here, uh, here to cover the bases on this nine-game main slate DFS and sportsbook plays. Hey, um, Fryer, there's a watch party, a Game 6 NBA watch party tonight at Fenway Park because the Red Sox are playing a day game. So on first base here, what's your favorite bet on the early slate of games? I'm actually going to look a little bit more towards the Midwest and that Cubs-Padres game. Obviously, it was an ugly one the other day. Uh, I really like Luke Voigt a lot in this one at a one and a half total basis, taking the over on that. Uh, he's going up against Matt Swarmer, who I know had that one rough outing and seemed to be doing fine prior to, but he had been struggling with lefties. Obviously, Voigt, Voigt is not a lefty, but a lot of his damage has come against right-handed pitching. Nine extra base hits in his last 10 games uh, after that brutal start to the season. And he's got a 40.2% hard contact rate against right-handed pitching and a 248 ISO. So I like him to get over one and a half total bases. And with Musgrove on the mound, too, if you're looking for a run line play or money line play, I like the Padres in that one, too, at minus 115. Okay, Steven, between that 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock window, what do you like here, dude? Well, first of all, it's uh, great to be in the presence of the newest social media influencer, and Emerson Lotz. Uh, so I just thank wanted you. to throw that out there. Thank Give you kindly. Huge, thank make, you kindly. Making big moves. You know, mm -hmm. big influencer as he sips his coffee. Um, and I hit my <laughs> camera. Um, so the Red Sox are continuing their series against the Oakland Athletics. These teams have played each other five times already. Yep. You know how many times the Red Sox have covered the run line in all of those games? I'm going to say every single yeah, time. I was going to say everyone. Yeah. Every single time. This Oakland team, you know, we talked about this, you know, before the season began. Take the under on everything to do with Oakland. Working out just just wonderfully so far this season. And then we're going to go on the run line once again. Minus one and a half. You're getting plus 120 on that. That feels pretty enticing. I mean, the Oakland Athletics are usually always the underdogs on the run line. And they're one of the worst teams on the run line. Going 29 and 35 on the year. Whereas the Red Sox are one of the better teams on the run line. 35 and 28 on the season. You know. Rich Hill, very old guy, still on the mound pitching. Oakland's numbers against lefties, some of the worst in the league. Everything just aligns here for the Red Sox. And once the Red Sox get into that Oakland bullpen, over the past week or so, their ERA, relievers combined, about eight and a half. Good Lord. Give me the Red Sox a minus one and a half. Dude, they're like outscoring the A's a, a bajillion to like three or something. And they're like five games that they've had against them this season. Uh, Buke, second base, which DFS play? Who are you going to pay out for uh, tonight? Can talk about a starter or a hitter? Yeah, you don't even really need to pay up for this guy. But Reese Hoskins has been absolutely annihilating the baseball. 4,400 tonight going up against Patrick Corbin. Let me tell you something about Patrick Corbin, okay? There's not many things I can say about him that are family-friendly, that we can say here on the sweat. So I'll just put it in a family-friendly way, and he is struggling on the mound, as he always does. But Reese Hoskins, over the past, like, five games, he has at least – Two hits in four of those five games was four for five two nights ago with 44 DraftKings fantasy points, and he's been hitting for power, two as well. Three doubles, a triple, two home runs over that five-game span. He is absolutely on fire right now, and now Nick Fryer is just going to agree with me because he was very, you know, very dramatic in his reaction when I said Reese Hoskins. Okay. That's just what happens when smart baseball guys get to go first, so now he's just going to look like he's trailing my pick. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, Fryer, I got to agree with Steven here. Hoskins' price is like criminally low on DK right now. Yeah, he is, and that's why he was my favorite player for tonight, too, because <laughs> looking at what he's done against left-handed pitching over his last 54 plate appearance, he's absolutely obliterating them. Uh, he's crushed Corbin over the course of his career. Corbin struggling against right-handed hitting. I'm not going to waste your time much more than that because Steve is, you know, I'm, you know, I can't say, I can't go that far. Um, I can't give him too much credit. But the other guy I was looking at in that game, too, if we're going to look at starting pitchers, too, at the higher end value, uh, Zach Wheeler, he's rolling right now. He's been providing you 25 DK fantasy points in six of his last eight starts. Uh, and one of those starts, he's still got you up to 20. Of course, the Nationals, they don't strike out a ton against right-handed pitching, but we just saw the other day, uh, they got like, with dice up for like 11 K. So I, I think that he's still in a good spot there. And you look at what um, what the Nationals have been doing against right-handed pitching, too. They're, they're, they're bottom third in the league against uh, in OPS, ISO, Woba against right-handed pitching, too. So I think this, this Philly game, I, I like quite a bit tonight, that the, uh, the Philadelphia side of this one. 
Steve, Corbin does look washed. And I totally forgot that, like, last year the Nationals uh, let him start 31 games despite an ERA that's, like, floating around six, too. So. And then they invited him back again this yep. year. Yep, yep. And uh, all of a sudden his velocity is down and, and walks are up. You absolutely nailed it. Let's go to the hot corner, Bukes. Favorite value playing DFS tonight? Yeah, Ezekiel Duran for the Rangers. This is not somebody you probably even know who it is off the top of your head, but he is very, very cheap, 2,500, batting about sixth or seventh in the Rangers lineup. They've been flip-flopping him around a little bit there. But since he's been called up to the majors, uh, he's been making a big impact for this team that needed an impact player. Against righties, 402 Woba, 250 isolated power, and a 168 WRC+. Plus. Uh, averaging 9.7 DraftKings fantasy points against righty. So somebody who's near the bare minimum uh, that you can take in the infield feels like a pretty nice value play for tonight going against the Tigers, who I couldn't even name three players that are on that team right now. And I covered this league for a career, so it just goes to show the amount of talent that's on the Tigers right now. Some people like them in the beginning of the season. How's that working out for it? But big shock there. Tigers not making any big moves. Um, so I think Durant tonight, 2,500, really strong value. All right, Mr. Fryer, save us some money, but do so with an individual who could also provide potentially a lot of points. Yeah, well, Steve's over here dragging the Tigers, understandably so, but I do like the start the Tigers starting pitcher tonight at oh. 5.9K. I think he can save you a lot of money. Bo Briesk, and just for the sake of argument, too, Miguel Cabrera, Javier Baez, Austin Meadows, Jonathan Scope. You said you couldn't name three Tigers players. There's like five for you right there, Steve. So do, do better at your job, please. Um, but when you look at this Rangers lineup that Briesk is going up against tonight, they're seventh in K rate against right handers this season. And since May 20th, their carry has been a tick higher than the 23.8% rate that they've got going. Um, and also their bottom 10 in ISO and Woba against right-handed pitching too. And Briesk too, I, I understand he's had some really rough outings. You look at that season ERA, not exactly promising, but look at what he did in his last couple starts too. He's got a little bit of momentum going and he did against two quality teams too. That momentum can be huge for a rookie. All righty, uh, Steven, wow. He's staying on top of you this morning. Extra bases, favorite. No, no, no. Home. Let's go home. Favorite run line or money line bet? Let's do that first. Fryer. Oh, me. All right. Uh, I like the uh, the Phillies, of course, tonight. I talked about that one a little bit. They're, them on the run line, of course. Zach Wheeler, as I mentioned earlier, he is rolling right now. We already talked a little bit about how bad Patrick Corbin is. Whether you're looking at righty or lefty, I still doesn't matter who's going up against him tonight. I, like, I love this Phillies lineup. Of course, you can try and stack some guys in this one when you're looking at it from a DFS side. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like the, the, the way the Nationals have been playing of late and the way that uh, Zach Wheeler is rolling right now, I have no reason to not like this one. I like minus 120. Bukes, you got a uh, favorite run line or money line bet on DK Sportsbook? Yeah, of course. And, you know, Nick Fry can put on his resume that he nailed five Tigers players during a segment on the sweat. That's really going to help him. His LinkedIn in page. His career. That's yep, what he LinkedIn would do. He page. would add it to his LinkedIn profile. Yep, that, that can be his headline. Name five <laughs> Tigers players. Um, Martin Perez is the modern-day Pedro Martinez pitching for the Texas Rangers and goes up against that Tigers team that Nick Fryer is, is so in tune with against them tonight, taking them on the run line to win by one and a half runs. I have no problem with that at plus 110. Perez has been absolutely out of his mind when taking the mound this season. I don't know why. I don't know how, but I don't care because the guy keeps making us money. The Tigers are one of the worst offenses in the league against lefties, 286 Woba, an 86 WRC plus, and they're striking out almost 23% of the time. With the way that Perez is pitching, I don't know what's happened to him, but he's been seriously, legitimately untouchable. Had an 0.64 ERA over his last five starts. That is absolutely absurd. Give me the rejuvenated Martin Perez against this Tigers team that Nick Fryer is a big fan of and has all their jerseys. Dude, you've been talking a lot about Martin Perez lately. I know you miss him here in Boston, don't you? Well, <laughs> with the way he's pitching, yeah, I miss him in Boston now. Why couldn't he do this last year or a couple of years ago? <laughs> it's now true. I miss him. It's true. I got one more for you guys. Favorite player prop for tonight's Major League Baseball slate on the DK Sportsbook. Take me there, Fryer. So I mentioned I love this Phillies game. Of course, Reese Hoskins over one and a half total bases. We talked about him a ton. Zach Wheeler over five and a half Ks. He hits over on that one on the regular. Now, when you're looking in terms of value, though, you're not going to get a whole lot on the payout for either of those two. So if you parlay them together, that turns into plus 205. I like that one a lot. I'm not usually one for going that high on these um, on these single, same game parlays, but I think that these two guys can both hit the over on those numbers. Bukes, give me a winner, baby. 
Yeah, I think uh, taking really anything to do with uh, Luis Severino going up against the uh, the Rays tonight, I think is a strong bet. You can get over six and a half strikeouts for him at minus 135. A little bit juicy there, but this has been a number that he's been hovering around for a while. And this Rays team, uh, they're going to go up there and, and, and be hacking, baby. They're not going to go up there and draw a ton of walks. I think this is a strong number for Luis Severino, who's looked really, really good um, so far this season. I think this is a strong spot for him. So give me over six and a half strikeouts for Severino, minus 135.